Hello, I'm Dr Rada. I'm a practicing NHS GP, broadcaster and campaigner for wellbeing. To say the past year has been difficult would be a huge understatement. For many of us, this has been the most challenging year of our lives, and it may have taken its toll on our mental health and our wellbeing. And this is why it's never been more important for us all to look after our wellbeing, because doing so will help us deal with the pressure and the multiple challenges that we're all facing. Our ability to cope with the normal stress of life, as well as being able to bounce back from adversity, crises or trauma, while staying mentally well, is often referred to as emotional resilience. And I'm really delighted to be working with Thrive London on this short video, which will help explore invaluable tools and ways to boost your resilience. So what is resilience? What does it mean to be a resilient person? And how can we build emotional resilience? Well, importantly, resilience is not a personality trait. It's something we can all take steps to achieve. As resilience expert Dr. Lucy Hone says, the good news is research shows that resilience requires what we call ordinary magic. It's not some elusive personal quality that is only available to a few of us. We can all teach ourselves to be more resilient. Resilience is something that can be learned and improved and also built or eroded by difficult circumstances. So our resilience varies over our lifetime. Emotional resilience is a huge topic. So for the purposes of this training, we're going to focus on the positive things that you can do to help keep your resilience topped up. For example, strong relationships are really important for building resilience. So is exercise and doing the things that you enjoy. As we explore these more in detail, we're going to hear from a range of people about how they're supporting their own well-being and building their resilience. Before we begin, let's start with a quick exercise. Feel free to pause and start so you can do this. I'd like you to write down the beginning of three sentences. Number one, resilience to me means... Number two, one daily tool I use to build resilience is, and number three, I'm resilient when I. At the end of this video, we're gonna to return to these and complete the sentences together. Firstly, let us start by exploring self-awareness and the importance of focusing on what we can control. The coronavirus crisis has presented multiple stresses upon many different areas of our lives. From fear of the virus itself to the financial impacts, our relationships, a sense of loss or perhaps boredom or loneliness. So how do we prevent ourselves from getting overwhelmed and maintain our emotional resilience? We're living in uncertain times and really tough things happen to us all. Learning to accept that there are things we can't control can be a big step in learning how to manage and resolve whatever problems you may be having. We can support this further by becoming more self-aware. Dr. Lucy Hone highlights the need to tune in to the good. As humans, we get sucked into the negative. We're really good at looking at all the bad bits rather than tuning into the good stuff. And it's massively important for us to counterbalance that by choosing to focus our attention on some of the good stuff. Her research shows that resilient people are really careful to choose where they focus their attention. We can add to this further by also tuning into ourselves. So try this now. Pause and ask yourself, how am I doing? So it's important, um, particularly at the moment, to really acknowledge those feelings and those thoughts um, that people might be going through. And for me, it feels like it's important because actually there is so much emotion out there right now. There's so much noise. And whilst I think it's brilliant that people are talking so much more about mental health, people are sharing what they're going through, actually quite often what we tend to do is we don't acknowledge that it's having a kind of a bigger impact on ourselves. So we pretend that we're okay a lot of the time. I think over the last year, we've definitely seen people functioning at quite a high level who haven't felt able to embrace the kind of the real emotions they're feeling. It was really important for me to acknowledge my emotions because during this difficult time where there are a lot of things that we can't control such as um, obviously the pandemic the rules um, who, like we can't go out certain places and um, the one thing we can control is ourselves. We all lead busy lives and it's often easy to ignore making time for yourself for personal reflection. However, simply checking in with yourself and listening to how you're feeling and in turn increasing your self-awareness is really important. For some people, this might look like meditation or mindfulness, but for many people, it can be something you make a habit of doing when out for a walk, cooking at home or engaging in a hobby. 
I use my morning ritual of having my coffee to connect with self. So every morning um, I'll go down, I'll make my cafeteria of coffee and then I'll sit either in the lounge, depending on what the weather's like. I do have a little garden room that I can watch the birds. So I'd normally sit there while drinking my coffee to contemplate on the day ahead, really, and connect with myself about how I'm feeling. One of the ways I have been doing that is through meditation. Um, it helps me connect with myself and kind of center myself and have enough like mental strength to, um, you know, get through the day. I start my day holding in my hands a little trinket that someone special gave me a while back. And it is a trinket that represents love, affection, consideration of a loved one who unfortunately passed away at the height of the first lockdown. And that reminds me every morning of how lucky I am to have met this significant other. It's important to make sure you're devoting a bit of time every single day to find joy. What brings you joy? What makes you smile? What makes you feel like nothing else matters? This is where creativity and purpose is everything. Include things in your daily routine that help you feel calmer and that make you smile. That can include all the new activities you've enjoyed in recent months, like those family walks in the park and those Zoom calls with your friends. In tough times, we can often ignore this because understandably, we're just trying to get through. But joy and purposeful activity to find that joy is just as important because it refills our reserve. And with greater reserve, we can deal with whatever may come much better. As author Matt Haig said, the small things that make you happy can give you as much joy as the big things, from a really good meal to a conversation with a dog or completing a puzzle. In other words, it's okay to treat yourself to the things that make you smile and make you feel good. Don't be hard on yourself. The more you attend to those joyful moments, the more it changes how you process the entire day. So prioritise finding the joy each and every single day. I felt very much like I wanted to um, garden and start growing things. Um, so I commandeered a piece of land that was around our rented flat and um, get, uh, with permission started growing and um, made a raised bed and was productive in um, sort of producing food for me and my family. At the beginning um, of first lockdown back in March 2020, I started a podcast um, designed to normalise a lot of kind of mental health issues and kind of struggle. And I think that was really helpful for the first lockdown when our, words were t our worlds were turned upside down. Um, and that helped bring joy because it kept people in touch and it realised that you weren't alone in the way you were feeling. It helps to, to take time to also focus on kind of other aspects like career stuff. So I've been very heavily focused on, you know, where I want to take myself in that sense of things. So I've been, you know, learning a lot about um, kind of where my strengths and weaknesses lie and how I can improve on those things to to then focus on kind of where I want to go career-wise. Studies have shown that having strong supportive relationships, whether family and support structures, or from a wider community and faith groups, is probably the most important thing we can do to build our resilience. Findings show a clear relationship between resilience and dealing with uncertainty, and the power of relationships, collectivising and social networks. All too often, people think resilience is about that good old stiff upper lip, about battling through and ignoring your feelings. And it's not that at all. Actually, being resilient is also about being able to accept your vulnerabilities, knowing when you need to get help and to reach out. Through connecting with others, we receive affirmation of our identity and share compassion for our struggles. So don't be shy or embarrassed to ask for support when you're struggling. It's important we stay connected now more than ever before. Well, during 
the pandemic, it was really difficult for young people, especially with their emotional well-being. So a lot of us decided to start our own youth clubs and we started them with Westminster City Council. And that was really good because it meant that we could connect to other young people and share our experiences and how we felt. Us human beings are social animals. Our connections matter, people matter. So finding ways in which we can talk and maybe even old fashioned ways right now, actually writing to each other, posting each other a letter, letting other people know that you're there, we're there for each other. That will help them. And most importantly, it will help you. Being kind doesn't cost all the time. So giving someone compliment, for example. You know, even if you are on a Zoom call to your colleagues, you know, ask them, how are they? Ask twice and people will be kind and, you know, they talk to each other. Spending time in green space is known to be beneficial for mental health and overall well-being. And many people are finding that connecting with nature is boosting their mood and are feeling more grounded because of it. This isn't surprising. Seeing trees, hearing bird songs, seeing the sky and feeling in contact with nature are associated with increased levels of happiness and well-being. So if it's safe for you to do so, try this for yourself. It's really important to get out. I know that people are nervous and anxious getting out, but if you take the precautions that you need to take, it's definitely worth stepping out and getting some fresh air. Um, and just taking in nature, you know, and really just connecting again with yourself and nature and what we naturally have in this world. Participation in social and community life has attracted a lot of attention in the field of wellbeing research. Individuals who report a greater interest in helping others are more likely to rate themselves as happy. So we know that engaging in volunteer activities, for example, can help build personal resilience. This may not be possible or suitable for everyone, but volunteering increases skills and the well-being of volunteers as well as social connections. Perhaps more than this though, volunteering helps bring together communities by developing our understanding of each other. Thrive London has loads of information about how you can support others in your community safely, so go and check out their website. I spent my time during the first lockdown after I recovered because I was unwell myself picking up laptops. That in itself was therapeutic for me during the first lockdown because I could help families. I felt as if I was doing something. I volunteer a lot of time um, to a mental health support community and I work with volunteers who care about the same things that I do. So um, staying connected to those people has been really important um, because it reflects my values, it reflects what I care about and you can't underestimate that. Although it can feel really difficult if your normal routine has been disrupted by things out of your control, it's important to try to keep your routine as stable as possible to give yourself a feeling of normality. Taking care of yourself helps to keep your mind and body primed to deal with situations that require resilience. So for example, let's focus on the importance of exercising and getting enough sleep. Exercise is known to boost our mood, while physical fitness is a protective factor for our mental health. Having an exercise routine, which you can do at home or locally outdoors, is really important and will help give a positive influence on our self-esteem and self-worth. So if it's safe for you to do so, visit your local park, get some fresh air. If getting out and moving around is not easy or possible for you, then keep moving about indoors as often or as much as you can. Even relatively small increases in physical activity can contribute to improved health and quality of life. So in the beginning when lockdown first started, for me personally, it was a big knock-on effect for me because I'm a British champion bodybuilder. So I'm used to being in the gym daily. And for me, that was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? So I decided to utilise my time and go for walks. And what that did for me is not only help me maintain my physical um, activities, it also allowed me to see new parts of my area that I didn't even know existed because I'm always in the car and never really walk. So that has really had a, a big knock on effect that way. And as a result of 
me finding my new love of walking, um, myself and a friend, we set up a, a club called the Catwalk Movement, which is to encourage other women to, to get up and get walking and just don't have to walk for a destination, but just, just get up and you know consciously go for a walk just to maintain your physical activity. So, yeah, I feel like the reason I've kept myself active is because, first of all, I feel like one of the most important things to realise during this time is to prioritise yourself as you're your first priority. And keeping physically active is one of the best ways to do that in terms of keeping yourself mentally and physically healthy. Additionally, we know that being active helps us sleep better, which positively impacts our mood and our focus. And better quality sleep aids our ability to deal with challenge. So in other words, if you prioritise the quality of your sleep, you will be more resilient. Try winding down before going to bed, perhaps by reading, doing a crossword or listening to some soothing music. Taking the first hour and the last hour of the day and not using any technology and using that time to start with a read or um, spend time in the garden. You know, if it's a, you know, a rainy day, then even just sit, sitting, looking outside. Um, and that kind of helps clear the kind of brain fog that I feel I can sometimes get when I'm way too involved in screens for long periods of time. And it's, it's small things that make small differences. And when you keep doing them, it actually builds up to make a bigger difference than you realise. I've recently got into the habit of doing a Sudoku puzzle before bed, um, which um, it calms me. Um, it gives me sort of a half hour or so just to, to slow and, yeah be a bit more calm. <laughs> so I hope this has been a helpful walkthrough of just some of the strategies that you can use to help build your own personal resilience. Remember, making small changes can make a big difference and can help you to effectively build mental resilience. But what works for one person might not for another. So try out a few things and find out what works for you. A huge thanks to everyone who's told us how they've been supporting their own wellbeing and building resilience in this last year. I really hope it's given you some inspiration. It definitely has inspired me. At the start, I asked you to write down the beginning of three sentences. For me, they end like this. Resilience to me means listening to how I'm feeling and what I'm thinking. One daily tool I use to build resilience is being in nature. And I'm resilient when I tell someone I'm struggling and what I'm worried about. Try this for yourself now. You can find loads more resources for supporting your wellbeing on Thrive London's website at www.thrivelondon.co.uk.